Krista here. I just wanted to do a small follow-up video about the sun-dried tomato experiment that I did earlier and talk really briefly about fermenting green tomatoes and of course put a little blurb in there about our food industry and the upcoming vote. So as far as an update with the uh, sun-dried tomatoes, I really love the process that I posted about was taking the skins off, saving the seed, and drying the meat of the tomato. And what I got was three different products. I have my seed here, which is lovely, um, enough for next season or two, and that was a small batch. In this jar, I have the skins, and they're, they smell wonderful. They're really vibrant. The skins are powdery. I'm gonna blend those up and make them into a true powder. You can use them as a garnish. Um, you can mix them into it, literally anything. I would say the, Cooking them the very least you can, like putting them at the end of a recipe is when you're gonna really be able to absorb all of that flavor. And then the skins, the meats rather, excuse me, um, they're beautiful, they're kind of translucent, they're all different shapes and sizes. Uh, they, taste, they are fruit leather, they taste wonderful. Tomato fruit leather might not be something that you first comes to mind, but it is so delicious, especially if you have a really sweet variety of tomatoes. What I didn't show you was I did another experiment where I just split my tiny tomatoes in half. I didn't remove the skin or the seed and I just dried them. And what you get here is a different product. They keep their shape. Um, they have a different texture, a little bit tougher. Uh, and there's just a little bit more complexity to them. They're still fine to eat and to just pop in your mouth and eat. I'm not sure how necessarily you would cook with them. I think I'm going to experiment with putting some in oil and just see if that will help. Um massage their body a little bit uh, but if you have a, a lot to process that might be the way to go um, if you're in a hurry so those are the options I'm happy with all of them when I originally harvest this about three or four weeks ago I had a box of green tomatoes and over the last couple weeks they all turned red with the exception of this jar uh, so that's something to keep in mind is that tomatoes will ripen off the vine and a lot of the tomatoes we get especially in off season um, and throughout the year they're harvested when they're green there's like truckloads of green tomatoes and they ripen off the vine which is a cool aspect of this fruit um, but one of the advantages of having a garden is you get to pick something when it's at its peak um, and you get to take that energy inside yourself and that energy goes into your body and stores and so I prefer fresh over ripening off the vine um, so I've been left with this and what I've done is I have slivered up white onions I've done a little bit of jalapeno from the garden and I crushed some cumin and coriander in my mortar and pestle I put them in the jar. I left my um, tomatoes whole because they're small If you have bigger tomatoes, then you'll want to either cut them into halves or quarters and I put them in this jar So there's a difference between fermentation pre preserving through fermentation and preserving through vinegar and you can, we can talk about that later, but right now I'm really focusing on fermentation because I have a natural bias to that. I really love the microbiome. I really love introducing different bacteria. And I just want to encourage you to not be intimidated, or if you are intimidated, to push through that. And to, to the one way, best way to get through being intimidated through the fermentation process is to just do it and then do it and do it. And I think what you'll find is that it's a very simple process and you're not really doing much. You create a habitat and nature does its own process. Like so many other things in nature, that's really, that's all that's being asked of us. So um, the fermentation process is literally so simple, y'all. Like I just put salt in some water, warmed it up, made sure it dissolved. I did two tablespoons to four cups of water. I have everything in my jar here and Oh, let's see how this goes. Um, I let the water cool at room temp and I'm going to fill it up to right about there. So I left a little bit of room in here. I didn't fill all the way up and the reason is is because it's gonna need a weight. You want all of your um, product to be submerged under the salt water. This helps to discourage the bacteria or uh, other things from <laughs> If you have, okay, for an example, if you have a tomato, say, that's out of the surface, that might rot in a different way because we're looking to create an environment that's submerged under the water. And so what I'll do is I will get a plastic bag or something. I save everything. So something like this. 
um, I'll fill it up with what's left of my brine and I will put it in there and it will submerge everything else. So over the next couple of weeks, um, you might see films of bacteria on the surface, but what you won't notice or what you shouldn't notice is that there will be mold happening inside of the brine because that salt solution is creating a sterile environment. Plus we're hoping that we're getting all the oxygen out. And so as it bubbles out, it has like a gas escape. Um, yeah, and that's ba that's it. Like I'm just gonna leave it on my counter for two weeks and then smell it and then eventually taste it. And, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you to really trust your senses, trust your sense of smell, trust your sense of taste. These senses have been an, an uh, crucial part of our survival. And we have this knowledge automatically. I feel like it's part of our automatic systems. Um, and if you can't smell very well or you're doubting yourself, have someone else do it. And these senses will help inform us. And so just in, in lieu of this being like um, the idea of coping, um, positive coping mechanisms, I really love the slow process. I really love the process in itself. For me, it's like making a potion. It feels ceremonial. I get to work with the plants, get to know them, see their stripes and see all the variety. And these days is um, the, the stress and concern, the violence, the tension, the confrontation, um, is pushing us to the points where it's just quite incomprehensible and unbelievable and scary, especially for those who are marginalized or in minority groups. Um, so many people are being targeted right now. Outwardly, violence is happening. And if you're not experiencing that, that's great. But do know that that's happening all the time, has been, and it's coming to a surge. And we're going to continue to see that surge up until the election and through the election. Um, so as we do that, just finding ways to center yourself so that you can be available for other people who maybe um, are threatened more than you or affected more than you. And if you're extremely threatened or affected, go to the kitchen. The kitchen is where we make medicine. The kitchen is where food becomes medicine. Be with yourself and allow those distracting thoughts to go away. Also, vote. Vote, vote, vote. I voted. It felt like shit. It did not feel good. I did not like the feeling. On a local level, I felt great. I was like, yes. I, I know my community. I know who's going to be affected by this. On a national level, I was like, wow, this one vote is not going to change um, the underlining issues. No, it's not. That's going to take time. That's going to take activism. That's going to take continuously showing up and voting to not to sh to not vote at all because you think the system is whack or whatever is on you. And I know that I want to look back at this and say I did everything in my damn power to get Trump out of the office because fuck Trump. All right, y'all. I hope you have a great time with your green tomatoes and the rest of your summer harvest. I'll see you on the next round.